Robert Cooper here for Regression 2 uh, ICPSR. I'm going to do an introduction to matrices. Uh, we're going to do some basic stuff with matrices in this first video. Uh, so I'm going to start with making a vector, uh, which is simple using the concatenate function in R, the C with parentheses. So I'm going to start it with vector 1, and I've just put some kind of random numbers in here. I'm, I have 9 in the uh, vector, so it's going to work out to a 3x3 three three matrix when we uh, transform it. So we're going to reform this uh, and transform it into a matrix. You can always uh, look at a function if you don't know what it is or what its arguments are or what it does by using the helper, um, which is the question mark, and then you put the function immediately next to the question mark with no parentheses, and you will see the helper function, and it will show you all the things that you want to, would want to know about it, um, its arguments, and a couple of examples at the end. So, just to show you, if we hit this thing, uh, well that's not right. Um, so, we have n row, n call, and by row are the ones that really matter. Um, n row, it specifies how many rows you want in the matrix or n call, and ultimately, in a lot of cases, you can specify one of them and the other one will automatically come out because you'll have certain elements in the vector. Right? Um, the key thing is the by row. Um, so if you do by row equals true, it will fill by row. If you don't, it'll fill by column. So I'm going to show you an example really fast using our vector one matrix. And so we're going to take that vector one matrix and we're going to turn it into a matrix called um, vector, vector one turns into matrix one. It is, uh, in this case, by column, and you can see that from vector 1, um, it fills in by co column 1. So 1, 12, and 30 become column 1, 1, 12, and 30. And then it rolls to the next column. Okay? Um, mat 2 is the exact same numbers. It comes from vector 1, the difference being that uh, we have the by row equals true argument. And in the by row equals true argument, we just switch from filling by columns to fill up by rows. And you can see now 1, 12, 30 uh, from the original vector 1 matrix is now filling uh, by row. And we can just uh, do a last uh, little comparison. I'm, you see I'm using this uh, semicolon and then a, a break here. So this breaks one line into two lines, so you can execute two lines at the same time. We can look at the dimensions of our matrix through dim, the dim function. Uh, and both in, these, in this case will be uh, three by three. Uh, let's see, we're going to do some basic arithmetic with functions. We're going to take mat1, we're going to add it to mat2. So we've added mat1 to mat2. These two matrices right here added together. You do element by element addition. You can see uh, row 1, column 1, plus row 1, column 1, equals row 1, column 1 of the new additive matrix. We can do subtraction and do the same thing. Now, multiplication is a little bit different because there are, in fact, two forms of multiplication here. You can have element by element multiplication in R, um, and, but you don't want to use the normal multiplication operator um, that operates on a vector, let's say, or operates on two numbers. You don't want to use that same operator for matrices um, uh, unless you actually intend for element by element multiplication, which means you're not truly doing matrix multiplication. 
uh, matrix multiplication has the uh, percent sign wrapped around the asterisk. So you have percent sign, asterisk, percent sign. And um, true matrix multiplication, you should know, if you don't know, we will be talking about it in this class, is row by column uh, multiplication and dimension by dimension and it's additive. So I'm going to show you how those are different. So we take the mat1 and mat2 and we multiply them together and we get one product. We take mat1 and mat2, that was uh, element by element multiplication. So it was just row 1, column 1 times row 1, column 1, yielding the product row 1 times column 1 and so on all the way through the matrix. And now we have mat1 times mat2, but uh, created multiplied and matrix multiplication. And you can see it's different because it is in fact row times column, dimension by dimension, all the way through, and it's additive. Right? So that first uh, row one, column one, is the entire row of one times the entire column of mat two, all added together. That becomes the new um, element row one, uh, I'm sorry, one by one in the uh, product. Okay, and it goes all the way through just like that. Um, element by element division can actually happen in R, but it's not something that we do normally and it's not very useful. Um, but transposition and inversion, these are things that are actually very important. Uh, transposition of matrices is where you flip a matrix along its diagonal. So I'm going to show you, and it's the T function in R. So we have um, matrix one, and what we're going to do is basically see the mirror image across the diagonal. So 1, 55, and 9 in this case are going to remain the same. And then the elements that are below the diagonal are going to become the elements above the diagonal. And the reverse will also be true. Um, this remains the same regarding uh, matrices, whether or not the matrix is square. And um, you always start the, the diagonal, in any case, is um, when row equals column, so uh, element 1, 1, element 2, 2, element 3, 3, so on and so forth. So the transpose of matrix 1, you can see 30 at the bottom at 1, 3 is now 3, 1. So the rows and the columns of everything flip. The only thing that wouldn't flip, by definition, would be those that are along the diagonal because their rows and columns are the same. Okay, and finally, we're going to look at inversion. Um, all of these things together are going to be pretty much all the pieces that you need um, put together in a certain way to get to a matrix version of linear regression. So I'm going to do an inverse. The solve function is the quick um, can function in R that will get you the inverse of a matrix. So I'm defining an object, calling it mat1inv, mat1inv. Um, that's going to be the inverse of the first matrix. And then I'm going to look at it. So we're looking at the inverse of the matrix here. Let's try this again. I made it disappear. All right, there it is. Uh, and now, if uh, one were to ask how you might prove this, uh, what defines a matrix and its inverse is that if you multiply those matrices together, you will get what is called the identity matrix, which is the equivalent of of one in matrix language, 
where ones are all the way down the diagonal and zeros are in all the off elements. So I just multiplied um, the matrix one by the matrix uh, inverse. And now you'll note in R that we have, um, in the diagonal we have one, one, and one, like we should, but we have some numbers that are not exactly zero in a couple of places. And that is just a floating point um, problem where the computer um, rounds, it has to round at some point. So there is some slight calculation error out to a number of decimal points um, that every computer will entertain um, when executing math like this. So negative uh, 5.2 times e to the negative 17 means uh, 0.16 zeros and a 5. So that's um, as close to zero pretty much as possible without being zero, and that's just from the floating point uh, rounding here. So that's the uh, essence of um, the arithmetic and the basic calculations that you will commonly um, perform with matrices, uh, especially matrix multiplication, uh, transposition, and inversion. Those are the ones that are gonna be the most important going forward. And uh, I hope these have been uh, a useful guide. Uh, we will continue these videos with more uh, matrix work in R uh, shortly. Uh, see you in the next video.